Introduce yourself, please. Yeah, so my name is Dario Salvi. I'm a uh, postdoc researcher at the University of Oxford, and I'm also interested in air quality monitoring. And uh, what have you been doing with your air quality sensor over the past few years? In fact, when did you start working on the air quality sensor? Yeah, it all started in 2015. Uh, I came here to Oxford and uh, my, so I was involved into a residence association and people in my area were concerned about air quality because of uh, big developments there. And so I was keen on using Arduino and DIY electronics and I've read about initiatives about air quality monitoring with Arduino, for example the Air Quality Egg. So in my mind I thought it was simple to do and I just bought some kits online and I built a, a basic electronic monitor with an Arduino. And then what, what, what were you monitoring? What sort of uh, air, air quality were you monitoring? So at the beginning my idea was to monitor uh, sound, which is not air quality, um, particles and ideally also nitrogen dioxide. Uh, so I went to on forums online and searched for um, information and I discovered that those kits that you buy, they're not calibrated. So basically they spit up some numbers and, but they don't mean much. So I looked into how I could calibrate those uh, kits. And one of the things was to do them in a lab, but that's quite expensive because you need to buy uh, gas tanks. So in the end I said, well maybe I can liaise with the city council because the city council has some uh, electronic monitors here. So this and is the city council in Oxford, yeah? This is the city council in Oxford. And I can lo collocate my sensor with the electronic monitors and then get the data out of the two sensors and then compare the two data sets. Uh, so I was lucky enough that the city council here was quite supportive uh, to this idea. And, and yeah, so basically I have a, this calibration campaign, or characterization as you want to call them. Uh, I've done one last year in May, and I'm currently doing one, another one now. And you have a number of sensors for nitrogen dioxide, I think. So a number of different sensors by different manufacturers for the yeah. same, for the same uh, air pollution. Yeah. What if, what if you... Uh, what, are you, what sensors are you using there? Yeah, so I'm using four sensors at the moment. So the first, uh, initially I wanted to use only one, which is a metal oxide sensor. It's a very cheap one. Uh, Do you know who that's made by? So yes, that's Mix, M-I-C-S. You can buy it online. Uh, so I bought that one. And then I read on the internet the problem with those metal oxide sensors is that they drift all the time. So, meanwhile, I liaised with uh, Clean Air UK, and so Clean Air UK, they, uh, thanks to them, uh, we bought another sensor which is produced by SPEC, S P E C. It's a United States uh, based company, and they claim they produce these uh, inexpensive sensors, although if you buy them with the development kit and after you pay customs, it is about, in British pounds, £300 we paid, I think. So it's not that inexpensive. And then I have a third one which is uh, based on uh, an electrochemical sensor and it's produced here in the United Kingdom by AlphaSense. The exact name of the sensor, I can't remember. They, the, these three produce, they, they all are supposed to read nitrogen dioxide quantities. And they have a fourth which is another mix sensor which also includes a carbon monoxide sensor in it. So it's a dual. Yeah, so they are all four now, they are put into one box and my Arduino is actually logged in from all these four sensors. Ideally, I would like to use only the metal oxide sensor because it's the cheapest. Uh, although it's more likely that I would need two sensors, like a metal oxide one and an electrochemical one, so that uh, the electrochemical one would may maybe compensate for the drifts mm -hmm. of the uh, metal oxide one. And I think the, the AlphaSense one, that was uh, lent to you by a local company. So really it's yeah. a partnership of uh, yourself, the City Council, a Network for Clean Air, Clean Air UK, uh, and also this uh, private company. Yeah, so this company is Ricardo's called, 
they are the provider of the official United Kingdom measurements for air quality. They manage the electronic monitors here in Oxford. In Oxford there are three electronic monitors, three stations. Uh, so thanks to a person who works in Ricardo, who is very keen actually on DIY and citizen science projects, he lent to me this half a cent sensor, which is not very expensive, in the end it's 150 pounds, I think. Um, yeah, and it's, it's supposed to be a decent quality one. So we're still exploring that. So, it's mm -hmm. not, uh, so in the end, yeah, we, we put together different people. There's a kind of a networking uh, going on. Uh, not very directly involved into this project, but there are also other stakeholders. There's uh, uh, people who... There's a, a cycling association, there's uh, Friends of the Earth, so there are other people watching and uh, doing uh, collaborations with us. So in the end, if, we, if I manage to get some interesting results, then maybe I can try to replicate this experiment also with other people. Mm -hmm. And you've already had one trial with the city council co-locating your sensor. Um, what did you what was what did you find? Uh, what was your experience there? Yeah. So in May, I left my sensor running for one week. This was May 2017. May last year, yes. Um, meanwhile, also the electronic monitor with, with the, both monitors, mine and the, the official one, were logging at one minute something rate. I took the two data sets, I only compared nitrogen dioxide, nothing else. And basically what I found is that, well first of all it is very noisy, uh, but if you average over, well my family's about 15 minutes were more or less a good compromise. And by using some machine learning, in particular use a very simple linear regression, you could uh, match the data. Uh, so between my data and the official one, the reference one, Although you need to put into the equations also temperature and humidity, so these two are very important. And yeah, so now with the new, with this evolution of the sensor, so the sensor now is being tried with other components, maybe I'll be able to correct those equations in an even better way. Yeah. Uh, and what are those extra components that you've added? So in May I was only using the metal oxide and spec and half a sense. Uh, they were all sampled using the Arduino 10 bits uh, uh, analog to digital converter. Now I'm using an extra mix sense, an extra metal oxide. I'm using a better uh, sensor for uh, uh, temperature, humidity, and also uh, air pressure this time. And I'm using a 24 bits uh, ADC conversion for the alpha sense and spec sensors, and that's because I found that the 10 bits were enough, especially for alpha sense. You could see that the waveforms were very segmented, you know, mm -hmm. it's quantized. So hopefully now I will be able to get more data, more yeah, better data. So we're we're just about to go and meet uh, someone from the city council and uh, retrieve your equipment. Um, where, where are we going to be going? So we're going now to the high streets, it's here in Oxford, there's a, a cabinet where one of these electronic monitors is located and my sensor is actually there collecting data together. So we're going there because I, my trial is finished so I want to pick the sensor and bring it home and then analyze the data I got. So we'll meet also with uh, one of the city council officer for air quality. Who's, uh, what's, what's the name? So it's called Pedro Abreu. Great. Well, let's go. Okay, let's go.